Hello friends, welcome to Pharmacology Insider, a complete guide for pharmacology related topics. So today we are going to discuss about pharmacology of anti-diabetic drugs. So let's get started to the topic. Now to understand the pharmacology of the anti-diabetic drug, first of all you need to understand about the pathogenesis of the type 1 and type 2 diabetes condition. Now the type 2 diabetes mellitus, the major cause of this condition it is linked with the viral infection and the autoimmune disease. The antibodies which are generated during the autoimmune disease is the major culprit in the pathogenesis of the type 1 diabetes as well as several viral infection they are also linked with the cause of the type type 1 diabetes mellitus. Now, there is a, a, a several genetic disposition links they are also associated with this viral infection and autoimmune disease but yet their interconnection is need to be solved. So all this ultimately leads to destruction of the beta cells of the pancreas and ultimately it affects the insulin deficiency. And as a response of that, there is a hyperglycemia and the rise in the blood glucose level at the same time increase in the lipolysis and the rise in the protein breakdown occur. So this is the overall pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus. Then in pathogenesis of the type 2 diabetes mellitus, high intake of the food and little physical activity is the major culprit which is directly linked with the obesity. Now because of the high intake of the food there is an imbalance of the energy supply and the expenditure which leads to increase in the free fatty acid levels and ultimately which reduces the overall glucose utilization which increases the ketone bodies in the urine of the type 2 diabetic patient. So this obesity and the fatty acid related derangement leads to insulin sensitivity and ultimately it affects the specific target cell for whatever the insulin which is released by the pancreatic cell and it tried to bind to the cell but because of the insulin sensitivity there is a derangement occur in the pathogenesis of the type 2 diabetes and ultimately this insulin sensitivity forces the insulin to release but it won't be able to bind to the cell because of the down regulation of the insulin receptor and there is also a link between the decrease in the lipolysis which is again associated with the obesity event. And in this condition, there is a relative insulin deficiency occur, which is linked with the hyperglycemia. So, this is over and all about the pathogenesis of the type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, we are going to discuss about the diagnostic criteria for the diabetes. Now, the fasting plasma blood sugar in the normal individual, it is less than 100, while in the pre-diabetic state, it is 100 to 125 while in the diabetic patient it is greater than 126 while the postprandial glucose load that is in the normal individual it should be less than 140 while in the pre-diabetic phase it is between 140 to 199 while in case of the diabetic patient it is greater than 200 milligram per deciliter while the American Diabetic Association have given the criteria for glycated hemoglobin level its percentage value in the normal individual it is less than 5.7 while in the pre-diabetic phase it is 5.7 to 6.4 while in the diabetic patient it is always greater than 6.5. Now there are major symptoms associated with the diabetics that is increased thirst, urination, increase in hunger, increase uh, there is a lot of fatigue 
blurred vision is observed numbness and tingling in the feet or the hands sores that do not heal as well as unexplained weight loss is also observed now what are the causative factor associated with the diabetes or the etiology in case of the type 1 diabetes the environmental factor enterovirus genetic factors especially the hla class 2 genes they are associated with that and immune mediated so this type 1 diabetes is considered as the immune mediated diabetes so that's why it is also called as a iddm while type 2 diabetes it is called as a niddm where the obesity physical inactivity and lifestyle factors they are the main culprits and insulin resistance which is happening in the pathogenesis and there are several genetic factor and family history which are also uh, link as a causative factor for the type 2 diabetes now the major complications of the diabetes the acute one the acute complications are diabetic ketoacidosis while the chronic complications are microvascular complication where neuropathy is there nephropathy is there retinopathy is there while macrovascular complications are coronary artery disease peripheral vascular disease and sometimes strokes also while this foot ulcer and the chances of infection they are very much common in the chronic complication associated with the diabetes condition now we are moving towards the anti diabetic drug part now this insulin in its chemical structure it is consisting of 51 amino acid chain structure now this insulin it binds on it is called as a nuclear receptor where two alpha subunit and two beta subunit are there now these two components alpha and beta they are bound by disulfide bond now this insulin molecule when it binds to alpha and subunits then there is a activation of this beta subunit by the phosphorylation process so three phosphate molecules they bind with this beta subunit and as a response of that activated it is called as a insulin receptor substrate now this insulin receptor substrate it is a protein family of cytoplasmic adapter protein that transmit the signal from the insulin and insulin like growth factor one receptor to elicit the cellular responses now the basic purpose of the binding of the insulin is for the control of this glucose molecule so that they can enter and exit for the overall regulation of the glucose in the cell now once this irs complex is activated with the help of the phosphate molecule it activate the three important pathways the first one where the activated metabolic pathway by binding with phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase ultimately it is stimulating glucose storage with the help of this glycogen synthase kinase enzyme so this is very important enzyme in the storage of the glucose inside the cell which is linked with this irs activity while there is a stimulation of the glucose uptake now this glut4 translocated at the cell membrane for the entry of this glucose molecule inside the cell so it is nothing but it is a transporter molecule for the entry of the glucose from the outside into the inside of the cell while the second important mechanism or the pathway which is got activated in this mechanism that is mitogen activated protein kinase map kinase pathway it is also linked with uh, all this major function while the third important pathway which is called as a transcriptional pathway now in this pathway there is a inactivation of the transcription factor which is associated with activation of the srbp1 c and ppar pathways now this srbp1c it is linked with the rise in the 
lipogenesis process while PPAR pathway it is linked with the several functions like decrease in the gluconeogenesis, decrease in the glycogenolysis, increase in the adipogenesis and there is a fluctuation in the adipokine level. So all these processes are important for the control of the glucose inside and outside of the cell. So this is about the overall mechanism of how insulin and its preparation work in the body. Now we will discuss about the different types of the insulin preparation. Now this insulin preparation based on they are classified on their onset of action, their peak action, their effective duration. So these are the three important criteria based on which they are classified. So you can consider this as a pharmacokinetic profile also of the insulin. Now the first insulin Lispro, Aspartate and uh, Glulicine. They are having a 5 to 15 minute of onset of action and their effective duration is 3 to 4 hours. While the maximum duration is of insulin Daglodec which is having 42 hours of uh, effective duration action and their onset of action is around 0.5 to 1.5 hours. While the second in preparation of the insulin which is having a higher duration of action that is around 24 hours that is insulin glargin and it is also uh, onset of action same as that of Daglodec that is 0.5 to 1 hour. Their peak of action is flat. While the next one is uh, insulin determined which is having effective duration of 17 hours. While the other one are uh, they are human regular insulin and human NPH. These are most commonly uh, utilized insulin preparation in the market which is having an effective duration 6 to 8 hours and 10 to 20 hours respectively. Then in the market there are different types of insulin delivery systems they are also available like insulin syringes, insulin needles, insulin pans are also there, insulin pumps are there, inhaled insulin is also there in the market and we have discussed the insulin and its mechanism also and how it works in the body once it is entered. Now whenever this insulin enters in your body there are different types of reaction occur so you can consider these as a uh, side effects also of the insulin. So here the first one is hypoglycemia. Now hypoglycemia occur in, in the diabetic patient because of the injection of the large dose of the insulin. The responses or the symptoms associated with are sweating, anxiety, palpitation, tremor and due to deprivation of the blood glucose there is a dizziness, headache also. There are a lot of behavioral changes, visual disturbance is very common, hunger, fatigue, there is a lot of weakness, muscular incoordination is also there. So for the treatment you must give the uh, oral glucose or the IV in the severe cases. While glucagon is also preferred 0.5 to 1 milligram IV. While there are several other uh, side effects or local reactions as occurs in the form of the allergy and the edema which is linked with the reaction of the insulin. Major clinical use of the insulin are diabetes as well as in diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar coma. So these are the major clinical conditions or the uses for the insulin preparation. Now we are focusing on the different types of anti-diabetic drugs, oral hypoglycemic agents where the first major class of the drug that we are going to discuss that is insulin and secretion enhancer. So in that the first major drug which is called as a sulfonylurea where first generation drugs are tolbutamide while the second generation drugs they are glabenclamide, glypizide, glycoside and glimepiride. Then the next major class in this category that is maglutinide analog where repaglinide and nataglinide are the drugs while the third major class that is glucagon like peptide and their receptor agonist where examples are exatinide and liraglutides. While the four major class of the drug that is DPP4 inhibitors where cetagliptin, vildagliptin and sexagliptins are there. Then the next important class of the drug that is which overcome the insulin resistance 
they are called as a bigunite derivatives or AMPK activator where metformin is the major class of the drug. Thiazolidine diols is the another class to overcome the insulin resistance where bioglitazone is the major drug. While there are some miscellaneous class of the drugs, they are called as a alpha glucosidase inhibitor where acarbose, meglitol and moglibos they are the example. While amylin analogs are also there, SGLT2 inhibitors they are nepagliflozin. So these drugs they are also nowadays utilized as a newer class of the drug. So this is the overall classification of the oral hypoglycemic drugs. Now we will be discussing about first major class of the drug that is insulin uh, enhancers, insulin secretion enhancers. Now this sulfonylurea and maglutinide drugs they basically act on the sulfonylurea receptor by blocking these potassium channels so that the entry of these potassium ions which is controlled by ATP sensitive potassium channels can be inhibited and as a result of that there is a depolarization occur and this depolarization is linked with the entry of the calcium inside the cell which is again causing the secretion or the release of the insulin at the specific side of the cell and thereby producing the insulin enhancing activity. There is another class of the drug where exatinide and liraglutides are there. These drugs they are acting on one specific type of incretin receptor where they bind on the specific uh, molecule of the GLP-1 component and once this uh, site got activated there are several components associated with this receptor alpha, beta and GS alpha. Now this GS alpha it is got energy from the GTP and it converts into GDP and after the activation of this inhibit the association of the adenyl cyclase which is getting energy from the ATP and it is converted into cyclic AMP component and which is also linked with the release of this insulin around the cell. So this is about the overall effect of the exatinide and liraglutide. Then we have cetagliptin and vildagliptin. These drugs they are DPP4 inhibitors. So they block conversion of this uh, GLP-1 molecule into inactive peptide. So indirectly they are facilitating the GLP agonist related activity and by blocking this specific enzyme they are producing the similar mechanism which is that of GLP-1 agonist and ultimately it causes the secretion of the insulin and it enhances the insulin secretion. So this is the overall mechanism associated with insulin secretion enhancers. Now we will be discussing their adverse effects. So sulfonylurea, they are linked with the hyperglycemia, nausea, vomiting, there is a flatulence, diarrhea or constipation sometimes. There is a hypersensitivity reaction like rashes, photosensitivity, purpurea and transient leukopenia is also linked with that. While DPP-4 inhibitors, when cetagliptin it causes loose stool, headache, there is a skin rash, allergic reaction and then there is a edema. While vildagliptin is associated with the hepatotoxicity. So these are the major side effects. Now we will be discussing about the another class of the drug which is called as a insulin resistance related drugs. So where we will be discussing about the bigunite derivatives. Now these bigunite drugs they are also called as an AMPK activator. Now the first major step which is occurring that is decrease in the hepatic gluconeogenesis and glucose production from the liver it also reduces. Now as a result of that there is a lower blood glucose level in the diabetic patient. Well the second step which is occurring enhances the insulin mediated glucose intake and disposal in skeletal muscle and into the fat. So as a result of that whatever the glycogen storage is there in the skeletal muscle that is being affected and 
here there is a decrease in the lipogenesis and increase in the free fatty acid oxidation. Now, as a response of that, there is a lowering in the blood glucose level in the diabetic patient. While the third important step in the mechanism which is occurring where mitochondrial respiration complex is got inhibited with the help of the indirectly activation of this AMPK activator components which is linked with the lowering in the intracellular ATP. So ultimately the energy source is reduced and as a result of that which promote the peripheral utilization of this glucose by the anaerobic glycolysis. So this is about the three important mechanism steps which is associated with the metformin. Now the side effects of this drug that is abdominal pain, anorexia, blotting, metallic taste, mild diarrhea, tiredness, vitamin B deficiency which is observed in the high dose while the major clinical uses are in type 2 diabetes as well as this drug they also prevent the micro and the macrovascular complications of the diabetes. Now I will be discussing about the mechanism of the pioglitazone. Now this pioglitazone it is a nuclear peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma agonist class of the drug. This drug they act on the nuclear receptor PPAR gamma receptor and ultimately they increase the transcription of the insulin responsive genes and there is an insulin resistance reversal where observed with the increase in this GLUT4 expression and their translocation. As a result of that there is a hepatic gluconeogenesis is reduced inside the liver cells. Now this increase in the transcription of the insulin responsive gene the activation it is controlling the regulation of the fatty acid metabolism and the lipogenesis in the adipose tissue which is also linked with the insulin sensitizing action inside the body and it is also associated with the decrease in the serum triglyceride level and rise in the HDL level in the body. So, which is a direct action of this pioglitazone. Major side effect associated with this drug pioglitazone that is edema, there is a weight gain, headache, myalgia, mild anemia and the liver function taste need to be watched on. The clinical use is mainly in the type 2 diabetic condition. So, this is the overall mechanism of the pioglitazone drug. Okay, so here we have discussed about the major class of the drugs as a oral hypoglycemic agents and their mechanism of action. Before that, we have discussed about the pathogenesis of type 1 and type 2 diabetes and along with that, we have discussed how the insulin acts on the body. Okay, so based on that, there are several quiz are associated like what is the structure of the insulin here the answer is B that is two chain polypeptide with 51 amino acid then second question the regulation of the insulin occur by which process so here the regulation of the insulin it occurs by all the processes chemical hormonal and neural processes are involved so D is the right option then third question where insulin receptor substrate activate which of the following pathways so here all of the following pathways they got activated so that is the correct answer the next question that is mechanism of action of glamepiride is can you guess the answer you can write down your correct answer in the comment section also so here it is provoking the release of the insulin from the pancreas well, repaglinide is of which class of the drug? That is the next question. So, it is a maglutinide. While well, the next question, DPP4 inhibitor, cetagliptin. That is the correct answer. So, with this, we have completed uh, pharmacology of anti-diabetic drug. So, if you have any query, you can uh, always subscribe, like, share this channel, Pharmacology Insider. To get the latest update on pharmacology related topics.
थैंक यू वन एंड ऑल